Hello, in this video we're going to look at using natural logs in economics. So let's start with the definition of a natural log, ln. The natural log of a number is what e, the mathematical constant, which equals 2.718, etc., must be raised to to get that number. So for example, the natural log of 5, written as ln of 5, is what e must be raised to to equal 5. In other words, e raised to some number equals 5, and that some number here is the natural log of 5. So if we plug in the natural log of 5 into our scientific calculator, you could actually use the Google search bar to calculate it for convenience, you'll find that the natural log of 5 equals 1.609 something something. So in other words, if e were raised to that 1.609, it would equal 5. So that's the, the basic idea of a natural log. Let's do some other examples. Uh, the natural log of 0 0.04 equals minus 3.2188 and so on. And again, in other words, if E were raised to that minus 3.2188, it would equal 0 0.04. The natural log of 1 is 0. In other words, if E were raised to the power of 0, it would just equal 1. Uh, a few things to keep in mind. We cannot take a natural log of a negative number. The natural log of negative 3 is undefined, as well as a natural log of 0. Why is that? There is no number that e can be raised to to get it to equal 0 or a negative number. The natural log of e is just 1. So if we were to raise e to the power of 1, we would just get back e. And then the natural log of e raised to the power of 2x just equals 2x. And again, in parentheses here, I'm just reminding of, of this idea. What must e be raised to to equal e to the 2x? Oh, just 2x. So that's the answer. Uh, some miscellaneous things that you should be aware of. Uh, e raised to the natural log of x is just x. E raised to the natural log of 6 is just 6. So if you note here, what is the natural log of 6? It's 1.79, and e raised to that is just 6. Um, also, if uh, e raised to the natural log of 2x is just 2x, e raised to the natural log of 1 is just 1. And lastly, and perhaps the, the most important thing, um, the natural log uh, and percentage change. Uh, we're going to see how they're related. The difference in two natural log numbers approximates a percentage change between those numbers. So let's start here. Let's say if some number increases from 4 to 4.2. Okay, uh, This could be sales or GDP and trillions of dollars, whatever the case here is. This would represent a 5% increase. Using our standard percentage change formula, our ending value minus our starting value, dividing by our starting value, equals 0 0.05. If we multiply that by 100, we get 5%. So when we go from 4 to 4.2, this represents a 5% increase in you know, whatever we're measuring, again, GDP, uh, the capital stock, whatever. Now notice here, uh, the approximate percentage change can be represented by the following. If we were to take the natural log of 4.2, whatever that value is, and subtract from it the natural log of 4.0, we would get something that, again, approximates a percentage change, about 4.88%. Now, what this 4.88% actually represents is a continuous growth rate. Uh, by that, I mean uh, something that is being co uh, compounded continuously over, uh, over the year, for example. So you got continuous compounding. Uh, let's take a look at it uh, as following. Uh, the future value is what some amount deposited today will grow to one year from now, two years from now. The present value would be uh, the amount deposited today, or it could be GDP today. 
and taking that present value and multiplying it by this exponential function where we got e raised to the power of rt where r is a continuous growth rate where we got infinite compounding during the year and t is the number of years uh, let's just plug in some values that we saw from the last screen so if gdp is you know four trillion dollars this year and if gdp is growing at a continuous continuous rate of 4.88 percent per year at the end of one year gdp would equal 4.2 trillion dollars uh, another thing to keep in mind, we can convert a continuous growth rate to an annual growth rate, where we just have uh, just compounding once a year, for example. And that is going to be, excuse my spelling here, the annual growth rate uh, can be given by the following. Take the continuous growth rate, okay, E is going to be raised to the continuous growth rate, minus 1, and you get back the 0.05. And using our uh, future value formula that doesn't incorporate continuous compounding, future value equals present value multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate or interest rate, we got the following, where the present value is 4, growing at an annual growth rate of 0.05 for 5%. At the, one, at the end of one year, we get $4.2 uh, trillion of GDP. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.